Hey, Nick, we are now in the bonus segment. Thanks for taking extra time out to be with us and doing this. So you're at Stanford in California. I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee. So how have you been surviving? Any hobbies? Any You've developed any therapy for being cooped up in your home? Uh, I've been trying to run. Um, you know, actually, I've been listening to macro musings as I run. Fantastic. Great. great therapy. Um, yeah. You know, I, I have to say, I normally run for about an hour. I don't go very fast, but I, listen, I don't listen to the full hour normally. I kind of hit about 45 minutes. And at the end of that, I'm just so wiped. I have to move to, you know, Katy Perry or some other mindless uh, <laughs> pop music for the last 15 minutes because I can't make it back home. Um, and then, uh, you know, in terms of hobbies, amusingly, my, um, my 10-year-old plays soccer and she's been starting to learn to juggle the ball, like do keepy uppies. And so I've been trying to do, I used to play and then I stopped and I started again recently, but so I've been trying to juggle, do foot, foot like ball juggling. It's fantastic because it's totally absorbing. So the good thing about it is it takes just enough kind of concentration that you've got to keep going. You can't think about anything else, but it's not too taxing. So we're on a break. It's, you know, the thing it reminds me of most is mowing the lawn. For many years, I quite enjoyed mowing the lawn. We don't have a big lawn, but it takes like 15 minutes to mow it. But it's, you know, the kids can't come near me and the lawnmower because it's too dangerous. <laughs> There's no cell phone. There's no email. Nice. Uh, and I read online, I watch, you know, it seems ridiculous. It's like, why would you watch a YouTube video? But there's a video on the best way to mow the lawn. It was like in a big circle getting closer and closer into the center. So it, it was this great sense of creation as you see your lawn getting shorter and shorter. But um, since I can only do that once a week, it's like juggling in my garden. I can't say it's a particularly productive hobby, but there it is. Well, well just to make sure we understand juggling, because when I think of juggling as American, I think of, you know, something in your hands, but you're doing it with your foot in a ball, right? Just one ball. Yeah, yeah. If ball. you see like, okay. um, you know, professional players, they effortlessly walk in and will do tricks. It's not like I'm right. doing that. Just kick a ball up off the ground and try and keep it in the air. Uh, it's actually very hard. You know, most people, it's hard to even do one or two, but it, it's, it's a practice thing. I mean, oddly enough, my... 14 year old son learned to juggle so he can juggle four juggling three balls is takes about an hour to learn i don't know if you can juggle uh you I mean with the hands with the hands yeah yeah, yeah I, can I, can, I can do a little bit of juggling with my hands yeah three is not that difficult four is dramatically harder so right. my son has done four wow. for a long time he was working on five he just gave up i mean i think <laughs> it was just too frustrating um but yeah it's uh it's therapy and then yeah. um I like running because I like getting outside. I mean, there's not that much else you can do otherwise to get outside. Um, I mean, I'm sitting here in my front room. Actually, I can see right out the window. We bought, just before the crisis started, we bought a new car. It was actually an X rental BMW X5. And um, we're so excited. It's the first nice car I've ever owned, to be honest. It's the first, like, you know, most of our <laughs> Congratulations. I was, and then the, you know, we've driven it all of like three times, and it's been sitting, <laughs> gathering dust in the front drive now. Nice. You know, I should go out and have a drive in that, though. I don't think I'm yeah. allowed to, so I'm not sure about that. But it sounds like you're having fun. You know, juggling with the with the soccer ball kind of reminds me of a hacky sack. Did you ever try doing hacky sack? Yeah, when exactly. I, it's a very similar thing. I mean, I think, you know, there's a piece by Lucy Kellaway in the FT is saying, are we allowed to? not feel too miserable locked at home. I mean, for those of us with younger kids, it's, you know, I, even including my teenagers, it's been nice to see them. It's depressing being in all the time. I'd much rather be out, but um, yeah. it's kind of making the best of it. I mean, food is running out. Um, so we're eating more and more, you know, actually bought a bunch of limes. Cause I remember the British were called the limeys. Cause you know, the big problem with sailors is that they get scurvy and they discovered yeah. uh, limes. I think those little, green limes are the best way to preserve vitamin C. And so they used to bring them with them. So we, you know, we've been sucking on, it's like our, our diet is disintegrating. So that's the big downside. I think we <laughs> well, I feel bad. You know, I can still go to a grocery store and get lots of groceries. So I'll share with you what I'm doing. Um, and, and I hate to bring it up because I feel like I'm in heaven compared to what you're going through, but you bought a BMW right before this happened. I bought a chainsaw right before this happened. <laughs> And I have a big tree down. So I, I live again in, in a place a little bit more yard space than you. There's been a big dead tree that's fallen over. I've waited a long time. And I went and got this chainsaw. Well, I knew I still could before things really clamped down. So I have a chainsaw 
and it's it's quite liberating to go and, and cut things up with that I'll chainsaw. And we have a yard to mow, so that's that's therapeutic as well. Usually my sons do it, but occasionally I like to do it myself just to get away. So that's kind of the maybe a, a new form of you therapy. Need an axe. You know what you need is an axe to go. Oh in wow. There <laughs> okay. You know, hack. I don't. I haven't seen how big this tree is. So maybe after four blows, my shoulder will pop, and that would be it. So uh. that's true. Now we we uh, have not done the axe on the tree. We actually have several trees. So you know, if, if things clear up, you're more than welcome to come over here to to Nashville and help cut trees down. <laughs> so no, I I you know I um. It's funny, the other thing is on Stanford. Stanford's been very proactive, by the way. And like, I notice whenever Stanford makes a decision, I see it echoed around other universities. And I don't have one thing that's in, but Stanford has canceled its summer programs, on-campus summer programs right now. Because Stanford, even interesting enough, the full quarter, it's not clear what's happening right now. We've had everything on campus until end of, geez, until basically full quarter starts, which is like mid-September, canceled. So, ah. Uh, you know, it's partly all my, conferences, my, all events. I, I haven't tried to host one. So SITE, which is Stanford Institute of Theoretical Economics, which is basically a big econ conference that runs several sessions, like 10 sessions each summer. That's all gone online. Um, I have something scheduled personally for Stanford in December, a management conference. I'm not sure that will be running because yeah. the university doesn't allow undergrads on. I think it's extremely unlikely it would allow you know, conference delegates to come. Um, that's why my prediction, I don't know how many universities will be fully back and operational by the fall. Um, well, that'll be interesting that, to see what happens to the uh, employment across campuses then, if, that, if that's the case. They're yeah. going to need more cuts. So what do you think about the American Economic Association annual meetings? Will that be canceled too? I, it's good I was discussing it today because uh, the MBR Summer Institute, the uh, meetings have gone online. I would give it a 50-50 chance of the AA 2021, which I think is Chicago, will go ahead. Um, yeah, I, if I had to bet money, I would probably bet they will not happen. Not because it won't be possible, but because partly a lot of universities will prohibit their faculty from going. So before other places canceled seminars, Stanford said it, wasn't, it wouldn't refund uh, faculty traveling internationally, and it, it would strongly dissuade them from doing so. Okay. So in that you know that cut that is probably still in effect so what would have to be is it would have to be by kind of september october probably they'd have to rescind all of that in order for people to buy tickets so i don't know the aa is probably buying its time i mean i'm actually submitting a session um speculatively to see what happens this yeah, aa would be lovely for me in the last three years i was on the executive council so um it was always quite hard work it's probably not obvious but you meet the day before and i mean it was amazing to the people on that council you know uh janet yellen was the current chair and ben bernanke for example is the last chair and olivia blanchard and our roth and you know all kinds oh, wow. of yeah um uh you know all kinds of incredible current and former bob Schiller was the president before that you know incredible people there here i just go as you know a more a mere civilian it would be much more relaxed i can get back oh, to that's it. great so thanks great. so much and, and stay safe thanks very much i look forward to you know I, i'll probably go out around today or listen to your next uh alex today i guess yeah all right take care okay cheers, bye bye